Once again, everybody, good morning and welcome to the podcast series here at the Visit Connection Summit. Another beautiful day in Las Vegas and we have another great podcast in store for you right now. We are joined by Mr. Paul Johnson. He's the CEO and co-founder of Radar Healthcare. And today we're going to be discussing safeguarding lives, the road to zero harm, high reliability, and a culture of continuous learning and safety in healthcare. Paul, thanks for joining us today. Let's talk, first of all, just Radar Healthcare. What does is, what is Radar Healthcare do? What kind of value does it bring to your customers? Sure thing. So um, it's interesting as to how we articulate it, but essentially... Radar is a software platform and we support our partners, um, healthcare organizations, in terms of managing some of the fundamentals. So there's a very functional element to Radar, which is if we're managing adverse events, we're managing risk, we're managing audit, compliance, people, things like that. But then there's another element that goes beyond that, which is through the adoption of machine learning and AI and those kind of tools, that we basically enhance that whole platform to help organizations visualize um, performance, service, risk, etc. So we're bringing about automation, we're bringing about visibility, and then the kind of really cool stuff for me anyway is that we, because of the nature of the platform, we can actually plug it back into the system to drive that continuous improvement. So effectively, we start to move the needle on. There's benefits very tangible around time and cost, but for us, it is we're driving and moving the needle on improving patient outcomes. So that's, that's what we're about, really. And that's what I think everybody in this business has a passion about, right? It's, just, it's really just the patient outcome and getting this patient healthy. Where a platform like this with Radar Health Care, is, reliability is a big issue, right? I mean, it has to be, talk a little bit about that and the reliability of Radar. Yeah, so it's interesting. I can, I'll maybe move on to the kind of the high reliability element because it, 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 it's what we look to underpin. And it's interesting because it means many things to many people. But for me, if I was to summarize what, what being a high reliable and having high reliability within your organization, it is that you have made a conscious effort and put demonstrable actions in place to drive excellence. That's part one, but to sustain that excellence as well. So it's a very conscious thing that an organization needs to do. And there are then many fundamentals that underpin that. Let's talk about there's a fundamental, there's a fundamentals underpinning that. Well, what is, I mean, you expand upon that a little bit for me. What really drives it? So, again, I was looking at, you, you see, there's lots of publications out there, so this is my view. <laughs> so, yeah. But that's important. Your view is important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I break it down into kind of three pillars. One is there is um, culture and leadership. I put those th two things together because if you, and that, 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 that is bottom up, top down throughout the organization, but it starts with the leadership. That if you set your stall out that, look, you know, we as an organization, we're going after this, whether it's zero harm, it's high reliability. And the culture has to be open, transparency, psychological safety within the organization. So I think that's the first fundamental, that leadership and culture within the organization. Otherwise, you won't achieve it. The second part for me is visibility and engagement is how I define it. And what I mean by that is essentially... If you don't know what the problem is and you don't know how you're performing against where you want to be, then it's almost impossible to get there. So you need to do that because you're engaging not only with your staff and employees, you're engaging with the, the patients. And then you, the visibility comes from you have to take a systems approach. I mean, people say data, data, data. It's absolutely fundamental because if you don't have oversight and visibility of performance, how do you know where to look? And how do you even know that you are moving towards that high reliability? And then the, the final one is kind of linked to the engagement and visibility is it's a systems-based approach. Well, you, we want people to be at the bedside, so we want to free their time up. So it's not about replacing people, but having that systems that are going to underpin all of those things is it, just critical if you're going to move to a high reliability organization. To expand upon that a little bit too, um, we know in the healthcare world, things still go wrong. Like there's just, that just happens. It's, it's the unavoidable. Um, so when it comes to safety in healthcare, why is it such a struggle to be such a high reliability organization? I think, I mean, look, there's probably many factors to that. And if you, if you think about it, the, the whole industry globally is pressured. So we have, if you look, just look at the aging population increases, you know, tenfold every year. So, and we, we find, you know, medications and solutions to chronic conditions, which mean we extend life. 
So therefore, we create more demand for our services, but we, uh, and that goes at a rate that goes beyond the rate that we're expanding at healthcare. So that's kind of the, the overarching challenge, if you like. And then um, I used to use this infographic, and it was um, two guys are pushing a wheelbarrow up a hill with square wheels. And there's a guy at the side of the road selling round wheels. And the caption just said, not now, we're too busy. Now, I kind of, and it wasn't to be critical of healthcare organizations, but we're in the moment. So you're, you're, you know, you're delivering care, there's crises, there's pressures creating capacity so that we can look at how we're going to implement those changes because we're going to realize the downstream benefits. I think that's the big challenge is understanding that you want to make that shift and then create the capacity in the organization to do so. Let's talk about how you guys are helping healthcare organizations foster a high reliability and zero harm culture. We talked about, you just talked about it a little bit, but as far as, you know, just implementing that idea of zero harm, zero harm, zero harm, how do you guys help people do that? Ultimately, we can't set the culture for the organization, but we can play a part of it in terms of how the, uh, I went back, I said, mentioned earlier about having a systems-based approach. There's a, there's a direct engagement with, with staff and patients that occurs. And then there's a kind of a digital communication if you want. Um, and then from a systems perspective, we're ultimately, radar is a very personalized system. So whilst we have some kind of core functionality that all organizations would adopt, ultimately they are tailored to the ways of working of that organization. So we are basically, how do you want to operate? What are the things that you're driving? And then we would tailor the system accordingly. When it comes from a systems perspective, I mentioned before that when I give the high level of radar healthcare. So one of the things that's really important as well is that you become a learning system. And so what we mean by that is, whilst we're managing these functional elements of an organization, we're bringing that data to surface it up and push it through the machine learning and the AI to visualize. We're connecting with patient records, EHRs, we're automating those things. Ultimately, we're capturing lots of information. We're helping visualize where you need to act, which again comes to the capacity issue. And then we're, because we're feeding it back into the system, if you go back to what does a high reliability organization mean, we're striving to be continuous improvement and excellence. From a systems perspective, that is exactly what we're aligning ourselves to. Constantly learning, identifying where the change needs to be made and then measure that change. And that's something that's really important. And that's good and bad. People often look towards the kind of the negative adverse events. Um, things that we do with the Emirates Health Service in, in, in the Middle East and, and even with uh, Cleveland Clinic where they talk about good catch where they've identified a potential issue. It's identifying where I've got best practice and how do I, from a systems perspective, perspective instill that into other um, services within that organization. So I'm reducing adverse events and I'm pushing best practice. And then that all feeds into that cyclical, continuous improvement. And once, you, and once you've switched it on and engaged it, then it's not that you can sit back, but effectively now we've put the systems, the culture, the processes in place. Now we're moving towards it. Now we're going after that zero harm and high reliability. Talk to me a little bit about what excites you about the future of Radar Healthcare and where you see it going, where you see it continuing to grow and how it can really help its customers. I, I could go down a rabbit hole here of lots of different innovations. We're doing some really exciting stuff around natural language processing, sentiment analysis, predictive analytics, those kind of things. But if I'm truly honest, what really excites me is we have something called Radar um, Community. So Radar Healthcare is a, a, a community that's embedded within the software and we connect all of our users. We have organizations that are working in senior living, in uh, mental health, talking to countrywide healthcare systems. You have Cleveland Clinic talking to the NHS. And something that we're very fiercely proud of is, um, I, I may get the numbers wrong, but I know they're around this. I think it was 312 suggestions came through that community. Uh, 250 were realized into the product. We're not driving our innovation and roadmap, our customers drive that. And that's what excites me because I don't know what they're going to ask Ness. So from that perspective, that's super exciting. Yeah. A big community coming together to drive excellence into our product that we then share and has an impact on the patient. 
not, not excited. And those suggestions, when they get implemented, they literally spread out everywhere that you guys go and everybody's being affected by it and being better off for it. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, really interesting stuff. Paul, thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting to hear when I, we get people up here that are so passionate about what they do and passionate about their products. And Radar Healthcare is definitely, your, you exude your passion for what's coming next, and that's awesome. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I've uh, yeah. enjoyed the session. Thank you. You're welcome very much. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.